Jonah Hill's less successful cousin Jared here with CarBuzz.com. And if I told you that there was an automaker out there that made a cheap, affordable, entry-level sports car with a six-speed manual, 310 horsepower, turbocharged engine, rear-wheel drive, you'd probably be pretty happy with that and take it, no questions asked. But what if I told you that car was a Mustang? See, that changes the equation, because now it's, oh, well, Mustangs are only good with a V8, and oh, the four-cylinder doesn't sound as good, and blah, 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 blah. Now, before I told you it was a Mustang, you were probably pretty happy with that idea, but I don't see why. If you take away the connotation of this being a Mustang, this is a good-looking car, it's got a really good motor, it's got good transmission options, and this one is a heck of a lot more comfortable than the last GT Performance Pack that I drove. So after spending a week with this car, I'm kind of thinking, hmm, I think the EcoBoost might actually be my favorite Mustang. I know, blasphemy, right? But we're gonna go ahead and take it out on the road and I'm gonna show you why this Mustang might actually be one of my favorites. And before we do, be sure to click the link in the description below to get all the best deals on the Ford Mustang over at carbuzz.com. Now let's go drive this pony. When you get to the Ford dealership and you're shopping for your next Mustang, you might remember like from your childhood that the only good Mustang you can buy is the V8 one. And that just isn't true anymore because the V6 is dead. They don't make a V6 Mustang anymore. They used to sell it alongside this one that we have here, which is the EcoBoost model. So it's a 2.3 liter four cylinder engine. They actually use it in a lot of their cars now. They're putting it in the Explorer. Even the Ranger truck has this engine. So yeah, it's used in a lot of applications, but this is definitely the sportiest application. It produces 310 horsepower and 350 foot pounds of torque just in its base form. They're actually going to sell a more powerful high performance version that comes in a performance pack for the 2020 model year, but that's not what we're testing. Uh, you can get it with two transmission options. I like that Ford offers both. Uh, you can get a six-speed manual transmission or a 10-speed automatic, which is what we have here, for $1,500 ar around. And now here's the thing. I wouldn't get the automatic transmission myself. Uh, I would rather have this car as a coupe with a manual transmission with the performance pack. This one that we have is kind of the opposite, convertible, automatic, non-performance pack, but it doesn't ruin the experience, at least not for me. I drove a 2019 Camaro SS, so V8 one, with the automatic as a convertible, no performance pack, and it kind of didn't feel great because it felt like a sports car that was just being sold without all the sports car trimmings. Like imagine going to a fancy restaurant or having like a fancy meal, but without the service and without the atmosphere and just eating it at a picnic table outside. You don't get the full experience. But with this, I feel like the Mustang as a four cylinder is actually really enjoyable because as I said in the open, if you just told somebody that, oh, I drive a, a turbocharged rear wheel drive manual sports car with 310 horsepower, they would go, wow, that's great. Which one is that? A Supra, a Celica, you know, whatever, if they didn't know anything about cars. No, it's a Ford Mustang. They would just kind of be shocked. So yeah, I think if you just remove the Mustang name from it, that this is actually a really good application uh, for this motor. I know everybody's gonna go, oh, well, the V8's the one you have to have. I've driven the V8 and it's good, it's fun, it's rowdy, it's ridiculous, but I'm gonna show you in just a little bit when the road opens up that this can be pretty fun as well. But right now we're just tootling along. We've got some traffic in front of us before uh, my little section of road here opens up. And I can talk to you about how comfortable this particular Mustang is. The one, the last one I drove was a GT performance pack with the Recaros. It's not a comfortable daily driver. I didn't want to spend a long period of time in, in it. But this... I would spend a ton of time in here. These seats are comfortable. They're heated and ventilated. Uh, they're partially powered, although the backrest still requires manual adjustment. And you get really good MPG. Uh, 20 MPG in the city, 28 on the highway, 23 combined. I've been getting about 24 combined already. And interestingly, the numbers for 2020, this is a 19, have gone up. You can get up to 36 miles per gallon in a four-cylinder Mustang now. So that's really good if you're going to be doing a lot of driving in this. I heavily recommend looking at an EcoBoost over the V8 model. And zero to 60, even on this convertible, which is obviously a lot heavier than a coupe, 5.5 seconds around 
around that time. That's pretty quick to get to 60 miles an hour. So now we can talk about the drive modes because we're about to get into a little bit more of an open road. And the one thing that you do not lose out on when you opt for a four-cylinder Mustang versus the V8 is all of the drive mode settings. You still get all of those and they are numerous and you kind of have to be a little bit of a rocket scientist to understand them all. There's just so many different ways to play with this car. I've got a toggle switch here that changes my steering from normal to comfort to sport. Uh, comfort is like really light, way over assisted. Uh, it's good if you're like coming back from the gym or something like that. I have it in its sport setting now. Very much weights up the steering. I don't think that the steering on the Mustang is quite as precise as it is in the Camaro, but the drive modes are certainly fun and it definitely gives you a different flavor depending on how you want to drive the car at any given point. You've, you've also got different drive modes here, a ton of them. So I'm in normal now. You've got a my mode, which trust me, that locks you into your favorite settings with the steering and the exhaust and everything else. Once you find out how to customize these exactly how you like, you're going to be happy that there is a my mode. There's sport and sport plus. I'm going to go ahead and put it in sport plus. And now we've got a different layout on our digital display here. You can hear it gets a whole lot louder <laughs> from that exhaust because we have the active exhaust package. It's like eight or nine hundred dollars. I definitely recommend doing that because it makes the whole car sound like that, which is it is just so great to hear. And this isn't even the most aggressive mode. We've got a track mode beyond that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in track. Let's see how fast it is. Quick! No problem getting up and going here. Downshifts are handled pretty well. Upshifts as well. We're going to go ahead and turn around here. Let's flippity do here. And I'll give it some gas on the way back here. Nice little sound. I like it. I like the way this turbocharged motor sounds. It's not as rowdy as the V8 by any stretch, but if you like turbocharged engines and you like boosty noises, like maybe you are you own a WRX and you want something a little faster, a little sportier, a little less uh, mundane, this might be a nice step up for you. Oh yeah. Nice mid-range punch there. Yeah, I really like the way that this engine and transmission kind of work together. I would be enjoying myself a little bit more if I had the manual, but again, not bad performance whatsoever. And just having only a four cylinder up front instead of that V8, I think you save about two, 300 pounds having the four cylinder up it feels smaller. The last Mustang that I drove felt like a large, and this still feels large. It's got a big hood, all of the, you know, you feel like pretty small in the cabin, but this just feels light. I'm going through the turns now, and yeah, it just feels like a lighter car. It feels more like a sports car than a muscle car, and I really appreciate that. And the, when you're done driving crazy, you can put it back in normal mode. Um, I can go in here and I can change my exhaust to quiet mode. Not really needed on this car, like on the on the V8, that car gets really shouty, so having a quiet mode can come in handy when you don't wanna wake the neighbors at 4 a.m. But I like having it, and I like having the, the different track modes and being able to configure all of it. It's pretty fun. Uh, the transmission itself, you know, I know there's going to be a lot of people saying the only way to get this car should be a manual, and I, I think I would prefer a manual as well. But if you do get the 10 speed, it's pretty smooth when you drive it normally in normal mode. When you put it into the sport settings, it can get really jerky and aggressive quick. Uh, so again, you know, you can just drive this car however you want want to drive it and it will basically cope uh, to be whatever you want it to be. And again, if it didn't have the Mustang name attached to it, I think people would really like this as a four cylinder entry level sports car. And now I'm going to pull over because I want to show you the Mustang interior. It's never a high point on Mustangs, but this premium package model that we're driving is a pretty nice place to sit and I wouldn't mind spending a prolonged period of time in here. So now that we've pulled over, let's talk about the Mustang's interior where 
Um, Ford, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag. You don't buy a Mustang specifically for the beautiful interior. That's why you get it for such a value over most European and Japanese sports cars. But I will say that I do think these materials are pretty nice. We've got some soft leathers. I do like this sort of metal finish that we have here on our premium package. All of the switch gear feels appropriately premium, although it is still a Mustang. So some of the door cards and stuff like that can feel a little bit cheap. And since we've got the premium model, we have the digital display. So I want to spend some time showing you because I think this is one of the best uh, digital displays you can get on a sports car right now. All of the controls for the gauges are on the steering wheel here. It's this big round sort of deep dish steering wheel. It feels massive compared to the Camaro, which has like this tiny little steering wheel. Uh, so I want to talk about these gauges. You can see them now. I have it sort of in its normal mode now, but if I go through my different drive modes, so here's normal, here's my mode with the loud exhaust, but the comfort steering. If I put it into Sport Plus, you can see there the tachometer changes. So now it's going to emphasize and prioritize those high RPMs. That's where you shift and all your shift points are. Um, so those are right in your line of focus now to make it a little easier to know exactly when you need to shift. If I go ahead and put it in track mode, see there you go, now the whole display changes completely differently. So now the tachometer is really prioritized and it's right in the middle of the gauges, the speed, fuel economy, all of that other stuff becomes less of a priority. And then we have a couple other modes. We have drag strip mode. So that's where your launch control, all of those settings are. We've got a snow and wet mode in case you're driving in a bit of inclement weather. This is the EcoBoost Mustang. It's pretty controllable even when it rains. The V8 is a little more lively and you actually might end up using that mode. And then of course, back to normal. Now, if I push this little Mustang button here, we have a ton of fun things we can do here. This is where we can change the exhaust mode from quiet. So I just go ahead and put it in quiet. You can hear not a lot of noise there. If I put it in track, definitely a lot louder, big difference there. Let's go ahead and put it back into quiet for the rest of the video. We've got our track apps. Those come with the premium package. So you can time your acceleration, your brake. You can use line lock. That'll just light up the rear tires and do a smoky burnout if you don't know how to do it. It's actually pretty easy with an automatic transmission, a lap timer. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense in a convertible Mustang. And then we've got all of our different uh, gauge options, uh, gauge cluster here. We can have it showing fuel economy, which is what I have it showing now. Um, or I can go back to gauges and I can click show gauges where now it'll show my boost pressure, inlet air temperature, my uh, G meter, all of those sort of performance uh, application things. Or I can have it just show the normal uh, settings with the trip and fuel economy and all of those normal things. Now we're going to talk about the infotainment, which hasn't changed much for Ford in a little while. So here we've got Ford Sync 3. Now you have to opt for a premium Mustang to get this or else you're gonna get this little tiny screen. I actually would almost recommend saving the money on the little screen, but it's just so bad. You definitely have to step up to this one. It's where you've got all of your climate controls, audio. We've got built-in navigation on this one here. I'm not gonna harp on this too long. You can go back and watch some of my other videos that I filmed, uh, filmed recently with Ford. Um, I just filmed an Edge ST and that has basically the same system. But I do like Ford uh, Sync 3. You've got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You've got Ford Plus Alexa, which I have just installed on my device. It can read your texts aloud. It's pretty quick and easy to use. Although I have noticed that like when you pull up the navigation system, it can be a little bit laggy at times. I don't know why this system just feels slower than the last couple times I've used it. But again, it's not bad, very usable, good voice command as well. We've also got heated and ventilated seats. That's really nice on a, in, on a hot day in Florida like we have here. And here are those toggle switches I was telling you about. Those come on this premium package. Uh, we've got toggle switches for a couple things. Even our hazard lights. I just love turning on the hazards that way. Just makes you feel like you're a fighter pilot. That's pretty fun. Um, you have your traction control on and off. Like, oh, all systems go. Engage steering sport mode. Engage track mode. It's just kind of fun playing with these toggle switches. You almost feel like a World War II pilot. 
And then we've got our cool automatic shifter. Again, I'd rather have a manual, but at least this is a pretty cool looking shifter. And interestingly enough, you can play around with all of the modes. They're all available here, all the way from normal, all the way to track. But if you go into D and then you push it down once more into S, it will lock out the sort of like eco and normal driving modes and only allow you to have sport, sport plus and track. So there's just a bunch of different ways to opt through the drive modes here. So we're gonna hop into the back seat, but before we do, the last thing I wanna talk about is the convertible top here. So it's got this latch and you need to do it before you can put down the power operated top. What are we here in a 1999 Chrysler Sebring? Come on. It's amazing that Ford still thinks that, you know, convertible cars have a latch. Even the last Camaro convertible I drove was fully power. So that's a little bit annoying, but on the plus side, when I push the button, it does go back automatically with no other steps and it stows behind the rear seats without taking up any of your trunk space. So that is a benefit. Now let's see if we can squeeze into those back seats. For your amusement, I will now attempt to squeeze myself into the back seat of a Mustang. Now, the Mustang is not horrible in terms of back seats. It's really impossible to find a two seat, four seat, uh, two door, four seat car that actually has a good back seat these days. Even the S Class Coupe, which is massive, isn't that good. But I've had the passenger seat set to where I would be relatively comfortable. And when I slide it back, I actually have some leg room. The headroom is a lot better than it is on the Coupe. I remember trying to sit in a Mustang GT Fastback and I had to definitely duck my head under just to fit in it. Now the seat butt is extremely tight so if you are a wide individual like I am you are going to feel rather snug in here but if I have the top open when the top goes back and I can really stretch out myself it doesn't feel too bad in here and I can definitely ride in here for a longer period of time and of course I can stand up and getting out is going to be a lot a lot easier. Now let's go ahead and check out the trunk where the convertible top does eat into your trunk space a little bit but less than you might expect. So when you opt for the convertible, you are gonna sacrifice a little bit in trunk space. You're gonna get about 13.5 cubic feet of storage in the coupe and only about 11.4 in this one. And I can't figure out if the back seats fold in the convertible model. I know they do in the coupe, but for whatever reason, I've not been able to find that latch. So you can see storage, not terrible, big opening, bigger than you'll get on a Camaro, especially a Camaro convertible. Now, the one thing that's a little bit weird is in the trunk, you'll find these. These are just these little plastic panels. They go sort of right here to make the roof line look a little bit more sleek. Because this is a lower priced convertible, it doesn't have sort of folding pieces like this, which results in this slightly inelegant solution. Now it's time to price out our 2019 Mustang uh, premium EcoBoost, which it gets a little pricey when you opt for the convertible, which is why I'm going to tell you that you should be buying the coupe instead. Pricing out our 2019 Mustang EcoBoost convertible, it gets up there with how we have this Mustang optioned. Um, keep in mind that all of the pricing figures we're giving you here are for the 2019 model, but there is a 2020, and some of the packages and pricing will be just a little bit different. So a base Fastback, that's the Coupe Mustang with the EcoBoost, is going to set you back $26,395. That's the one that I recommend going for. The convertible is a lot more expensive, uh, almost seven grand more. $31,895 is what you're going to pay for a base convertible. For that, you get a rear view camera, you get those track apps that I talked about, LED headlights, push button start, dual exhaust, automatic headlights, and cloth seats. So even a base Mustang isn't all that basic anymore. The premium that we have is about a $5,000 upgrade. Starts at $36,910. That's for a convertible, remember. Leather heated and ventilated seats, you get the SYNC 3 head unit, heated mirrors, you get the drive modes with all the toggle switches, the ambient lighting with the digital cluster, I highly recommend that. We also have Equipment Group 201A. Yeah, Ford's real clever with these names. Uh, $2,200, you get the nicer trim on the inside, 4G, Wi-Fi, uh, voice-activated touchscreen navigation, and blind spot monitoring. I would say skip that. This is a Mustang. You don't need any of that stuff. What I would spend that money on instead is the EcoBoost Performance Package. This is the 2019 Performance Package. It's a little different for 2020. I'll talk about that later. But the EcoBoost Performance Package is $2,495. 
drive, gives you a limited slip diff, 19 inch wheels, summer tires, a strut tower brace, aluminum instrument panel, four piston front calipers, larger rotors, and unique chassis tuning. Definitely worth it. Magnaride for $16.95, probably not. I had that on the G uh, V8 GT that I tested about a year ago, and that was really stiff, so I would say just keep the base suspension on the EcoBoost. There's Ford Smart and Safe, that's $1,000, gets you adaptive cruise control, auto high beams, lane keep alert, automatic emergency braking, and rain sensing wipers. Again, this is a Mustang, just pay for the fun performance stuff, leave the safety out of it, in my opinion. Active valve exhaust, $895, definitely go for that. As tested for our EcoBoost uh, premium convertible is 41,445 or 42,440 with destination. And I want to point out that if you got a coupe exactly as our convertible was optioned, it would only be about $36,400. Huge price difference, which is why I recommend getting the coupe. Now, even though this is a 19 that we tested, I just wanted to talk to you about the high performance option that will be available for 2020. It's about $5,000, which is a lot, but you do get 20 extra horsepower same amount of torque and you get the active exhaust with quad tips a limited slip diff 19 inch wheels gt front splitter gt brakes and the active valve exhaust similar to what you used to get on the ecoboost performance package but now you're getting more power out of the engine as well and if you're interested the gt premium convertible you can only get the gt convertible as a premium model is 44,855. for that you're going to get 460 horsepower from a 5 liter v8 but your fuel economy is going to take a big hit with 15 mpg in the city 24 on the highway and 18 combined so now that we've driven this 2019 Mustang EcoBoost Premium Convertible, I've got a few conclusions here, and I'm gonna try and tell you how I would option a Mustang. And remember, there are 2020 models coming out, so this 19 is gonna be slightly out of date, but basically it's, it's gonna be relatively the same for 2020. So I would say if you are going to get an EcoBoost Mustang, definitely go for the coupe. Now, if you want the more comfortable option, just get a regular uh, premium package like this with the heated leather and ventilated seats and get a manual transmission. You can get the automatic if you really just don't want to drive manual uh, or if you just don't even know how to drive manual, maybe your parents won't let you have one. The way I would do it is get that high performance engine option. It's going to bump the horsepower from 310 to 330. You're going to get GT brakes and a bunch of other performance upgrades. Get that with the manual. You're going to be a really happy camper with that combination. Against other convertibles, I think the Mustang is one of the better ones. I do do prefer it to the Camaro convertible. I just think this is a better looking car with a better looking interior. And when you're getting a convertible, you just want something that's more comfortable. And this felt a lot more comfortable to me than the Camaro did, which is why I'm going to reward the 2019 Ford Mustang EcoBoost with a score of great buy. I think that if this was a coupe with the high performance and a manual, I think I would probably give it a must buy. I think you just have to get over the fact that it's a Mustang and enjoy it for what this is. The turbocharged enthusiast manual transmission muscle car that you've been asking for. It, it, it just keep it out of your head that it's a Mustang and you will enjoy this car for what it is. And if you like this video and you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe to the CarBuzz YouTube channel and be sure to hit the notification bell to be alerted of all of our latest videos. And be sure to download the CarBuzz app on iOS and Android. That's where you can keep up with all of the latest and greatest in automotive news and to see more reviews just like this one. Hope you've enjoyed the video. See you next time.